Today we'll be talking about unstable angina. How would you define unstable angina? Unstable angina may be defined as 1. New onset chest pain 2. Resting chest pain 3. Chest pain that is longer than previous chest pain and 4. Chest pain that is more severe than previous chest pain. What is the underlying cause of unstable angina? The underlying cause is a decrease in blood supply due to coronary artery obstruction. This obstruction may be due to coronary stenosis or plaques in the coronary arteries. So then, would you say that demand for oxygen is greater in these patients? To the contrary, oxygen demand in these patients is unchanged. That is the reason patient can have resting chest pain. It is strictly a supply problem, most likely due to stenosis or thrombosis. How can you distinguish between unstable angina and anastomy? Cardiac enzymes. These two conditions may appear identical clinically. However, in unstable angina, there is no cardiac enzymes, while in enstemy, cardiac enzyme is positive. Also keep in mind that both unstable angina and enstemy show no ST elevation or pathologic Q wave on EKG. How would you treat unstable angina? 1. Aspirin 2. Beta blocker if there is no contraindication 3. Low molecular weight heparin, 4 nitrates, and 5 oxygen. When would you order a cardiac catheterization? If the patient is treated with medication and improves, then a stress ECG may be performed to determine the need for cardiac catheterization. On the other hand, if medication treatment fails and if the ECG suggests ischemia after 48 hours, then a cardiac catheterization is needed. How would you compare aspirin and clopidogrel? They are both very effective in treating cardiac chest pain. However, with clopidogrel, it has been shown to reduce the incidence of myocardial infarction in patients with unstable angina compared to aspirin alone in the CURE trial. How do you use the TIMI score to stratify cardiac chest pain? Well, if the person is older than 65 years of age, that's one point. Next, if there are more than three coronary artery disease risk factors, such as hypertension, diabetes, cigarette smoking, family history of coronary artery disease, and hypercholesterolemia, that's one point. Also, if there is known coronary artery disease with known stenosis, greater than 50%, that's one point. Aspirin use in the last seven days, that's one point. More than two episodes of severe angina in the last 24 hours, that's one point. And ECG ST changes greater than 0 0.5 millimeter, that's one point. And finally, positive cardiac markers, that's one point. PMO colleague, would you like to summarize for the students? I would be delighted.
First, unstable angina is due to a decrease in coronary blood supply. Secondly, it may present as new onset chest pain, rest in chest pain, chest pain lasting longer than before, and chest pain that is more intense. Thirdly, perform an EKG. Fourthly, Administer aspirin, beta blockers, nitrates, clopidogrel, low molecular weight heparin, and oxygen. And of course, stress test and cardiac catheterization are determined by the patient's response to treatment. Well, thank you for listening. And I hope this information will prepare you for your upcoming boards. Good night.